best of both worlds. Chill. Oh, <laughs> sorry about that. I was just combing my hair. And that's what this video is all about, hair. You know, I'm a mammal, you're a mammal, and mammals have a number of characteristics that put us into that group called mammals. The first one sounds a lot like the name, mammary glands. They produce milk for our young, right? The other, another mam mammalian characteristic is the fact that we have nails instead of claws, and we have hair. All mammals have hair at some points in their lives, even dolphins and whales that tend to lose their hair. And we develop our hair when we're in the womb. Um, the follicles develop, and the follicle is the base of the hair, and then the hair comes out, that's the hair shaft itself. And you're born with all the follicles you will ever have, hundreds of thousands of these things, especially up on the scalp where the hair is the thickest. And the only thing that can happen over time is you can lose your hair. So what is the structure of a hair? Well, have a look at this picture. There are really three concentric rings around each other making up the hair shaft. The outermost region is called the cuticle. Then there's a region that's inside of that in the middle called the cortex. And this is the part of your hair that has the color to it. The innermost region of the hair is called the medulla. Now if you look at another image and, and check out how the hair is actually situated in the skin, you can see the three layers of the skin. The outermost region, which is on the surface of your body, is called epidermis. Under, underneath that is the dermis, and then the innermost region, the lowest region, is called the hypodermis. Of course, hypo meaning below. You can see the hair follicle which surrounds the hair shaft. A number of glands are associated with the hair in the skin. For example, you can see a sweat gland that releases sweat through tiny tubes out onto the skin to, to cool the body down. In particular, notice this swelling around the follicle, sort of at the base of the shaft. This is the sebaceous gland, and we talked about that in my last video on the iodine fingerprint. So what's the difference between hair and fur? Well, we've got hair, we don't have fur, but animals like cats and dogs and squirrels, they have fur, not hair. You know what? Essentially they are the same thing. Chemically, they're both made of a protein molecule which is called keratin, which are helical strands that wrap around each other many, many, many times, creating the hair shaft. The main difference between hair and fur is the fact that in hair there's only one fiber or one strand that comes out of every follicle. Whereas in fur there are a number of fibers that come out of every follicle. So the fur is a lot thicker. Now functionally there's a difference. Um, hair itself um, we've lost a lot of the sort of evolutionary benefit of ha having hair and we are essentially one of the, the, the most hairless of, of the mammals, all right? We're sometimes referred to as the naked ape. Um, our hair, of course, provides some kind of physical beauty. Um, to some extent, it can, it can trap scents for mate attraction. Um, fur, on the other hand, because it's so much thicker, can stand up on end by the, there's, there's these little muscles that pull the hair, the fur up, the hair up, whatever. In fact, you can experience that as well. If you've ever had goosebumps, right, and you've noticed your hair stood on end, that's an old evolutionary behavior that is still present in other animals where the fur, like hair, gets pulled up straight and there's so much of it that it's, it forms a very thick boundary and that can trap in the heat so it's used for some temperature regulation. You know, my beard is turning gray. Why is that? Why are there different hair colors? Well, just like in your skin, your skin has pigment molecules called melanin and melanin is produced by cells called melanocytes. In the cortex of your hair, that's the second layer inside, and the outer edge, by the way, of your hair is pretty much clear so you can see the cortex through the outer region. You can see the color. Well, there are different types of chemicals produced by melanocytes. One of them is called eumelanin, and this is present in people that have brown or black or sort of brunette color hair. Another one is called pheomelanin, and this is responsible for producing sort of a yellow blonde color, even to the red color. So if we look at this picture here, the brunette guy there, he's got a lot of eumelanin and little pheomelanin. The blonde, on the other hand, has pheomelanin, a lot of that, that makes her hair blonde. And then this guy on the end here, well, why is his hair gray? Why is my beard turning gray? Because we have very little of both of those chemicals and therefore the hair appears white or gray. Now, what I want to do is have a look at the hair under a microscope. 
I am willing to sacrifice some of my hair for YouTube here. So I'm going to show you how you can make a preparation to view under the microscope. I'm about to do something that I might regret. I'm going to cut some of my hair off. You need to make me a promise, all right? If you're watching this video here, if I cut my hair on YouTube, you've got to at least rate my video, all right? How about that? Okay, what are you going to need? Well, I've got a glass microscope slide here, so we're going to need that. I've got a very, very thin cover slip. I'm not sure if you can see that or not, maybe by the reflection. That's going to go on the microscope slide. And here, dissection scissors. All right, this is going to be a rather inaccurate process as I do this sort of in camera. I have no idea if I'm going to cut off too much, too little, or what. But hey, YouTube is worth it, so I'm going to give it a try. I can't, I can't see if I'm even getting it there. All right, I'm going to cut that. Oh boy, all right, there you go. I got some of my hair, I've done it. I did it live on YouTube. All right, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to put the hair down for a second. What you need to do is prepare something called a wet mount. Now, this is a very simple wet mount. What, what I want to do is put a drop of water on my slide, so get something like an eyedropper or go up to the tap, turn the tap on, turn it off, just get a little drop of water, put a drop of water on there. Then what you're going to do is you're going to take your hair and put it on the slide. So let me show you how to do that. Here we go. I've got my slide here and I've got a drop of water on the slide and I've got my hair. I took out a kind of a big clump of this stuff. You really want to try and get uh, just a couple of one strand, a couple of strands if possible so that you can see the individual hairs. So what you're going to do is take a piece of hair, a couple pieces of hair and just drop them onto the water. Now I'm using my nice forceps so I can manipulate it well. Then we're going to take the cover slip and I'm going to add the cover slip on top of the slide, just like that. All right. Now, you may want to push down a little bit to push some of the water out of the way and get some of the air bubbles out of there. We now have a wet mount with our hair, and we are ready to look at this under the microscope. Here we are looking at a hair under the microscope, and I put a ruler down so you can get the dimensions. There's my hair, there's the ruler, and each little division here is one millimeter so I could probably put about 10 hairs side by side here and that would give the average width of my hair to be about 0 0.1 millimeters which is pretty close to the accepted average 60 times power you can see my hair again the air bubbles here these are not cells right students commonly think that those are cells but whenever you see a perfectly circular structure that's highly reflective chances are it's going to be an air bubble and there's a large one right there Still on 60 times, you can see the ruler is quite out of focus, but you can still see one millimeter here. So again, about 10 of them giving an average of about 0 0.1 millimeters. And this is the highest power, 200 times. And I've magnified my hair. There's an air bubble there. Not a bad little picture. I think I need a hair transplant. See you soon.